Good evening. I'm Mel Kipper. In tonight's edition of Pioneers of the Game, we'll retell the story of one of America's most prolific athletes, Stuart McFarlane. Stuart McFarlane grew up in Kentucky, the home of bluegrass and thoroughbreds, where he learned the value of hard work and dedication. One day he stumbled upon a golf club, and little did he know, this event would lead to an entirely new sport. The sport was monster golf, and the sporting world would never be the same again. We saw these kids just whacking away at this ball with these huge clubs, and my dad thought it was hilarious. I thought it was awesome. Oh, it was a bandwagon effect. I mean, before you knew it, we'd see, we'd see news footage of like kids in Missouri we'd never even seen, never even heard from. To see how big it's gotten in the uh, short time that it's been around, I mean, golf had, what, 150, 200 years to develop, and we had maybe 10, 15 years. It became a national phenomenon. Stuart McFarlane was where it started. He's the inventor. Stuart was the leading jockey in this thrilling race to recognition. Stewart was known for his exhilarating approach to the game. His famous hole-in-one on a 100-yard drive secured his place in sports legend history. Yeah, well, I mean, he took a club's length. He picked it out. That's when I think we all realized that this guy's good. Stewart, Stewart exhibits everything. Stewart McFarland's a brand. Without that brand, you don't have Nike sponsorship. You don't have Cialis. You don't have all those major brands attaching to your project and sponsoring the tour. Stewart was a champion and a poster boy for the clean-cut, hard-nosed player. A class act on the course, his nature could only be described as stoic, leaving the competition striving to not only match his gameplay, but his classy demeanor that made him such a fan favorite. If he makes the perfect shot, that was expected. He doesn't celebrate that. He just walks and picks up his ball and goes to the next hole. Stewart's a leader. Stewart's a natural born leader. He speaks, his actions speak louder than his words. And he's not uh, someone to rub it in your face when uh, he beats you, even though he beats you every time. He's a good guy to play with. When they founded Apple, Steve Jobs, he had that assistant, no one knows his name. I mean, I'm happy to be that assistant. It's okay because I've learned so much from doing it. So I'll take that. I'll be that assistant. In the next year, Stu's raging success continued. But after Stu missed a dinner party with Mrs. McFarland's kickboxing club, things took a turn south. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm done with the range, I'll call you Tina. I'll leave Soon tensions were mounting, and one day, Stu forgot to leave his emotions at the clubhouse. The Stuart McFarland that once graced the covers of Time, Sports Illustrated, and GQ looked like he was lost forever. He just broke down. He just. You could look in his eyes and you could see he was no longer, he lost his confidence. He wasn't the Stuart McFarlane, the great Stuart McFarlane that we'd come to see and come to know and we'd played with. He was just your average monster golfer playing in his backyard. The times, they were a change. He went through this real reclusive phase. Uh, he went all Howard Hughes and he just camped out in his house. He would just kind of sit in his room and we'd ask him if he wanted to play. No, nah, no, nah, he wouldn't want to play. We didn't really want to push it just because, you know, he was doing so bad. Common rhetoric states that without gravity, the world's just one big floating mess. As was the case with Monster Golf, without Stewart. It just wasn't the same without him, you know. We never saw him anymore. We never got to play. What was there to do besides Monster Golf? We don't have jobs. And during that time when he was out, it, ratings took a huge hit. Uh, NBC, who'd been our sponsor for about nine years, suddenly negated their contract. Without Stewart to push the sponsors and to promote it and to make it what it is, and what it once was, I mean, the game was dead. It kind of went on like that for a couple months. You know, I went, I went by to see him. He just, he had this glaze, this gloss on, over his back. eyes. Has he been by here lately? He has been by He wasn't. He wasn't ready to talk, he wasn't ready to be himself. He certainly wasn't ready to go out on the greens. Play a game of duck hunt? I go out by myself for a couple of months, try to just keep my game intact, and I see Stu, 7 a.m., out there, just practicing his chip shot, you know? And I, I just, I knew he was back. And from that day on, he hasn't been, you know, he's been the good old Stu. With Stewart's rediscovery of his game, Monster Golf was revisited and revived in American culture. 
It wasn't long before Stuart McFarlane action figures were back in Happy Meals and monster golf sets were flying off department store shelves. Welcome back, Stu. Welcome back. When everybody looks back on the sport and looks at the beginnings, they're gonna, they're gonna see Stuart and they're gonna see the first great monster golfer there ever was. I mean, he's built up this game. I mean, the game is so strong today. If he were to retire, the game would be able to sustain itself. Uh, I mean, we got strong corporate backing now. The McFarland Institute of Monster Golf, we got a lot of interested people. He's ensured that the game is gonna be lasting forever. I mean, he's got that competitive heart. He's got that fire inside of him. You know, he's always gonna play for that extra inch. Like, he's, he's not happy being away from the game. He's always gonna play. Will he ever truly lead the game? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. But one thing's for sure, he is the undisputed king of monster golf. He took a simple game and turned it into an art form. This makes him, Stuart McFarlane, a true pioneer of the game. I'm Mel Kipper. Good night, everyone. Thank you.